Hello! In this video, we are going to find the commutator for the position operator and the linear momentum operator, both in the x direction. Now recall that in quantum mechanics, we can evaluate the position operator in the x direction is simply by multiplying by x. On the other hand, the linear momentum operator in the x direction has the somewhat peculiar form of h bar over i times the first derivative with respect to x. So using those bits of information, we want to determine the commutator. So recall, to define the commutator for any two operators, this is equal to the first operator acting on the second operator, minus the second operator acting on the first operator. If these two operators commute, then this difference will be exactly zero. If they don't commute, we'll get a non-zero value. One thing which we can do, which makes it easier to follow what's happening with the operators, is to give them a dummy function, psi, on which to operate it. It's not essential to do that, but it does make the solution somewhat easier to achieve. So, by definition, what is this? This is equal to the position operator acting on the momentum operator acting on the function minus the linear momentum operator acting on the position operator acting on the function. And one thing to keep in mind is our function is going to be a function of x. And that will become important later on. So, whenever we have quantum mechanical operators, we operate on the function from right to left. So, this is equal to, well, let's continue that function, but now we need to have the momentum operator act upon the function. And recall that, by definition, this is h bar over i times the first derivative. And the first derivative is acting on our wave function psi. So let's put that in there to remind ourselves what's happening with that function. On the other hand, over here we have minus, now we have the linear momentum operator. And so now we have we want to operate on psi with the position operator. Well, that's simply multiplying by x. So we have x times psi. Now we have to be careful because when we have the little hat on it, this is an operator. Here, we've replaced it by its definition, which is simply to multiply by the variable x. So. It's very important that we've taken off that little carrot, little hat. So now, it's the next step. We want to, again, have our function operate on the function here. Remember, by definition, the position operator is simply to multiply by x. Since this operator doesn't act upon the uh, constant, we can just pull h bar over i out in front. And now we have the position operator, which by definition is simply multiplying by x times the first derivative with respect to x of psi. Now for the momentum operator over here, recall by definition it's h bar over i times the first derivative with respect to x. But now here's the important part. This is acting upon a product. And the product that we're operating on is x times psi. So, 
simplify things a little bit, let's pull the h bar over i out in front. And see what we get. Well, we have x times the first derivative of psi with respect to x. Minus, and then we have the first derivative of a product. To recall, how do we handle that? Well, the derivative of the product is the first function times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first. So let's have the first function times the derivative of the second. So that's going to be d dx of psi. Now plus the second function, when I say plus, you have to remember we have the minus sign in front here, so it's going to be minus the second function, which is psi, times the derivative of the first. So the derivative of x with respect to x is just dx dx. Well, what do we get when we do this? Well, we notice that we have x times the first derivative of psi minus x times the first derivative of psi. So this is all going to cancel. We also know that we have dx dx, which is simply equal to 1. So that leaves our final value here to be equal to we have a minus sign times h bar over i times our function psi. As far as our last step goes, recall we simply added the wave function psi so we had a dummy function on which our operators would operate just so it's easier to see what's going on here. So we can simply remove this psi at the end and we see that our commutator is minus h bar over i. Now as a student if you perform this calculation and you flip this around, so you put the linear momentum operator first and the position operator second, if you simply flip those terms, you will change the sign of the commutator and you will get a positive h bar over i. So essentially the important thing here is that h bar over i or minus h bar over i are not equal to zero. So this tells us that our two functions do not commute. So therefore, we cannot simultaneously know the position of a particle in the x direction and its linear momentum in the x direction simultaneously with infinite precision. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.